know what? This is a fun part of the show. We have a regular that writes and performs a brand new minute every single week. People love him. Uh, he is a phenomenon. He's a, he's a wild one. He sort of reminds me of like a Zach Galifianakis meets a uh, meets a like a windmill out. Yeah, in the all right. Let's wind let's like wind that. it back a little bit, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> really, Zach Galifianakis. Okay. How about a new guy that just yeah. be just putting out a minute. I like well, that part. Well, he's been doing it for twelve years. He's from okay. Tennessee. Okay. He's a goofy, right. goofy let's son of a. Let's make some noise for the great William Montgomery, everybody. All right. My family and I have been sitting here for 15 minutes. Can we get some f***ing menus? <laughs> that is uh, the guy that doesn't know how McDonald's works. Let me hear y'all make some noise if you met Dracula for the first time and thought he'd be just a little bit taller. <laughs> hey, Ted, I don't get it. What did you invent? That is uh, the guy who goes to his buddies. Uh, intervention and doesn't really know what an intervention is. <laughs> Boom. There it is. Another brand new minute from William Montgomery. Boy, have I missed uh, seeing you. Ron, I just have to say I loved you in all those Ernest movies. What, uh, Thank you very much. It's been <laughs> I got to tell you, it was fun and lucrative. The what whole was thing your, was. What was, was your favorite, favorite Ernest movie to make? Uh, Ernest Goes to Heaven. <laughs> uh, it's funny he said that. I hope all of y'all believe in Jesus because the only way you get to heaven is believing in Jesus. <laughs> William. William, what are you doing? I, I had to shave because of my self-storage in a place. We have a new, a new district manager named Gerald Zorro. Is that true? Yeah, his name is Gerald Zorro. Wow. I oh, know, it's bullshit. He came into the office. The other day, I had my beard. Gerald Zorro comes up to me and laughed, and he's like, what's going on with that beard? And then what'd you say? I said, uh, Mr. Zorro, I'm sorry. I swear to God, tomorrow I'm going to Fantastic Sam's. And the next day I went to Fantastic Sam's. <laughs> hey, you, you, had, you had the beard ever since you've had a job there, right? Yes. So you, they can't tell you to shave off the fucking beard. It literally hungry. was Gerald Zorro coming into town. You better stop I swear it. to God, it was the new district the manager. Fuck? And I, I, I pray to God he's not watching this tonight. You know I hope what? he is. Because I'm going to get fired. You he's not watching this tonight. I hope him and Cracker Feel Barrel Feel free to speak 50. freely, my friend. William, a little question about everything uh, from the waist down tonight. Uh, what the fuck? Houston, I fucking love these shorts, dude. Oh, that's great. Let's just say I started listening to Nora Jones again, and I was in... And I was in Cancun a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's weird. This is really what might get me fired, but Gerald has this. Is that that? Song? That's it. Yeah. You want to sing a little bit of it? Just picture me. Keep the song going. Just picture me down in Cancun with Gerald's daughter. Whoa. Uh, Patricia Zorro. Patricia Zorro. Let's just say we hit the hot tub. Let's just say we hit the pool. Well, you're dressed for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you look like you were conceived at one of our tours. <laughs> Is that a fucking joke? William. I pray to that's God that's a thinking. fucking joke. Ron, what's going on? I don't know, dude. 
William, have you been? Uh, have you been? Uh, have you noticed a, a decline in people hating on you on the internet? I'm what sorry. I have noticed is when I was down in Cancun, there was a when were decline you in, in trolls. <laughs> Two Wait. weeks there was a, there was an uptick in sunscreen. I am very fair skinned. Uh, I was on the beaches of Cancun talking to Trisha Zorro. Just trying to do my thing. You went to Cancun with your manager's daughter? I did, yeah. It was so weird he asked me. Uh, and and y'all y'all take this one y'all take this one home with you if you get on a seven thirty seven max. Don't do it. Those things are crashing. <laughs> there you go. Don't get on a seven thirty seven max. Welcome back to the lifestyle report with William Montgomery. It's uh, he gives you good life advice. Right, right now, Redman. What was that, you dumbass? What was that little fucking noise, dude? It is not. Uh, Much like Twenty wit- years ago, I I had an aunt named. Uh, uh, Pat Pat Zorro, who <laughs> okay. William, you're a little bit. I don't know what happened. Did you get a concussion since the last time? Uh... <laughs> I'll be quite frank. Uh, I will be if quite he... frank. I I bought these shorts on eBay for five hundred dollars. This is a uh, a collector's edition. Are the, are the spandex connected to the shorts? Is that all one thing? The is the under thing connected to that, or are those separate? Like I you... had a pre-existing. Um, uh, tight, whatever you want to call them, uh, tight sh- spandex short that I had in my closet. Uh, then I got these short. Closet. They match perfectly, by the way. They're absolutely the same. Yeah. All right, there he goes, William Take Montgomery, it. ladies and Hands gentlemen. Off. <laughs> Heck yeah. There you go. Let's give it up for Speedo Goggles, y'all. So uh, this is the movie critic who compares every movie he sees to the movie Edward Scissorhands uh, when he's watching the movie Jaws for the first time. Um, Hold on. Who the fuck has the scissor hands? All I see is a shark. William Montgomery. I don't know how you manage every week to look like both a child and a stepdad at the same time, but somehow you pull it off. You're just a bundle of likability. Uh, Is this your first time seeing uh, William Montgomery, Tim Dillon? No, I, I saw him last time. He was great. Yeah. I'm a big fan. I love it. I love... Wait, was it last time we did the World War II analogy with the with the the squirrel yes, album? The, the squirrel World That's War II. That's probably my best joke. Yeah, can, my, you, can, you, like my, can you remind us? Can, uh, can, can you, you do you that? Never, you never get favorite. to repeat jokes on this show. So can you remind us of what that joke is? Uh, so I have a screenplay for a movie I've been working on called World War II: A Survivor's Tale, but it's spelled T A I L, and it's about a family of squirrels living <laughs> in a tree. In the middle of Berlin during World War II, it's based off the movie uh, by Shel Silverstein. Basically, Larry, the father of the squirrel family, begins getting suspicious when Hitler starts rounding up all the Jews. <laughs> Patricia, the mother of the squirrel family, knows something's wrong, but Germany's been in such a bad situation since the end of World War I, and it seems like Hitler's got some pretty good plans for Germany, so she's on board. Basically, it's the struggle of Larry and Patricia's marriage while also witnessing the transformation of Berlin during World War II from the uh, perspective of a squirrel family up in a tree. Jonathan Taylor Thomas makes his theatrical return as Oscar. The drug-addicted oldest brother of the squirrel family. Uh, critics are hailing it as a sublime combination of Five Goes West meets Schindler's List, a must-see. Jonathan Taylor Thomas is clearly out of his comfort zone, playing Oscar, the oldest brother of the squirrel family, who quite frankly doesn't care if he's tearing his parents' marriage apart or if Hitler really is rounding up all the Jews. Wow. I love that. I love it, man. I would, if, I would inv- if I had the money, I would try to make that a reality. I kind of want real actors with masks. Swamp Thing <laughs> plays Jonathan Taylor Thomas. 
Yeah, like real creepy, like just. Do you all not remember Swamp Thing? They don't. Right now. William, we've heard a lot about you working at this self storage unit. Can you give us a little pitch of what it's like to uh, to hear it? Like what you actually would say if I was just walking into your storage unit place, right, middle of the day, and I'm just like, hey, man, I'm looking to maybe, I don't know, you guys have storage units available? Hey, what's your name? Oh, geez. Uh, my, na- my, na- my name's Kill Tony. <laughs> Kill Tony, very nice to meet you. How uh, How much stuff do you have? Well, I, uh, I just bought a, uh, a commercial airliner, and uh, I'm looking to store it somewhere because I'm going to be a professional pilot. Uh, that is a, a 10 by 50 man? space. We have them. Noise. Are you comfortable with paying $2,000 a <laughs> no. month? Okay, no. Let's say it wasn't an airplane, William. Let's say, uh, oh, I have this uh, case of... Uh, wine. Yeah, I have a case of wine. I need a storage unit. I would recommend a unit in the L building. It, uh, <laughs> it has a lot of insulation in there. Um, perfect for wine storage. Uh, I'd like to get you in the 5x5 premium, which means it's one of the first four buildings on the lot. It's premium. Right. There's a lot of homeless people yeah. who are in premium positions. It's close to the front. Is it climate controlled? It's not. What? It's a metal box. And that's what I tell people. Like, if we ended up going to a unit, I'd be like, Tony, here it is. It's a metal box. So I hope you're cool with $75 a month. Well, William, I absolutely love what you do every week and uh, every, every time I see you. I love you. It was nice to say I love you, William too. Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Uh, he hasn't even, they haven't even uh, met the new regular. The last I regular I know is Malcolm, who I loved. What right. happened to yeah, Malcolm? Malcolm's great. Yeah, Malcolm's a monster. But we have Sorry. a we have a new regular who's uh, who's been at it for a few months with us. He is uh, he's literally one of my favorite comedians coming up. He's been doing it a while from Nashville. Just moved to L.A. about a year ago, and uh, we absolutely love him. Make some noise for the great and powerful William Montgomery, everyone. <laughs> Make some noise for William Montgomery, everyone. You think there could be less butter? Get out of my kitchen! (laughs) That is a phrase I used to say at a cooking uh, show. That was my phrase. Just kidding, April Fool's. Uh, I'd like to give a moment of silence to a dear friend of mine. Um, uh, we lost him. His name is uh, Westminster Door Knobblers. Uh, we worked at a Sabaro together. Um, April Fools, there's not really someone named Westminster Door Knobblers. I'm pretty pumped. I finally got to see Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 last night, starring Helen Mirren. Uh, Spoiler alert, Helen Mirren is, in fact, the Roller Coaster Tycoon. (laughs) April Fool's, that's not a real movie. Um, Wow, look at that. William (laughs) Montgomery. I'm trying to understand what it is. He is a monster. He specializes in doing the impression first. And then well, he's definitely <laughs> special. And then he explains uh, what the impression was of afterwards. Like, can you give Lewis another example? Please, of, because uh, this is an April Fool's special set that we just saw, obviously. Yeah. If you, if you want to do a classic, you could just do it again. This is more of like a showcase for us. I would love it. Just give me a chance to go to Skankfest, my friend. You would fit in very well at Skankfest. Yeah, Skank I Fest. emailed you and I didn't get a response. Oh! Whoa! Yeah, it's bullshit. Yes. I emailed you like a month ago trying to get on. I am in love with this black guy. You might be a bonfire sponsored fucking (laughs) guest. You submitted, you said? I did, I submitted. We didn't even pick the submissions yet, dickhead. Whoa. Let me do my best impression. Yeah, do it, William. I just spent 30 fucking dollars on the ecstasy. The least you could do is buy the movie tickets. (laughs) 
Uh, that's an impression of my uncle in 94 before he we went to go see the movie Speed. It's <laughs> great. I like it. It's pretty good. I love it. Look at that. It's good. I love it. I say, Lewis, you need to check your fucking emails. <laughs> yeah, check this it. This guy's going to Skankfest. I like, so look, it, here's what I like about this guy. He breaks all the rules. They say no, no fucking uh, yeah, shorts on yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. No they sandals. say no sandals. They say no redheads. These are yeah, rules yeah. that we have in comedy. Are, yeah. are you somebody that wears shorts? <laughs> yeah, I'm, ever, I'm, I'm yeah. just blown away by whatever it is, and I understand why he's your regular. Yeah, It's so hard to put your finger on, but he's undoubtedly hilarious. You can't teach hilarity like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I could, you, he could be doing comedy for 20 years or three days. I can't tell. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, that'd really chap Tyler's ass if it was three days. It's like, like, an, it's like an, guessing one? an Asian woman's age. You're like, who knows how old this woman is? William, I think, I think you're on, the, on a roll of getting this. Will you give us another example of another impression? Yeah. I'm white with black stripes. That is the racist zebra. <laughs> 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 wow, the crowd's going crazy for William Montgomery. He might be going to New York City. All right, all right, William. Well, my guess is that uh, you're pretty far, uh, pretty in good position to maybe uh, go to New York. Who knows? We're gonna have to see at the end of the show. There he goes for now, William oh, Montgomery, ladies and gentlemen. 